first things first, I'm going to give props to Mike Gilbert from Mike and JD show for coming up with this topic to begin with. He was the one that kind of brought this to my attention. It really made me think about it. And that's regarding Matt Hardy and his AEW contract status. Cause it's being reported that his contract is about up that he is hoping to stay there that he's negotiating, but it also depends on his spot in the card and how they use him, et cetera, et cetera. If you've seen this man wrestle in the last couple of years, he does not have it. He is the poster child. Him and his brother are the poster childs for being unable to walk in your late 40s and 50, early 50s. So all these independent wrestlers, all these AEW stars, all these people risking their lives, the Hardys didn't do 25% of, of what these fools are doing. These are the poster childs. This man, he frankly, he was struggling to walk when he was part of TNA uh, this recent time. But the reason I bring up um, the broken thing, and or the reason I'm continuing to talk about it like Mike was, it's because I sat and thought about it. And and part of me thinks that there's a real possibility that we may see this character uh, return to TNA television in one way, shape, or form. Now, he could stay on with AEW as a producer or something behind the scenes. But if you look at a guy like QT Marshall, who returned back to the company, he's still wrestling independent shows and doing... You know, uh, he's doing outside work. Now, granted, TNA, it kind of is, but it's kind of not too. Um, TNA is not an independent show. It's not an independent booking. It's a televised show. So, you know, it, it's very different. Or he can make a, a quick stop before he ultimately resigns there. But the long story short is that Tony Khan is not going to use this dude in the main event. He is not going to give him a prominent spot on the card. Anybody knows that. Clearly, he doesn't, or he 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 believes that he should be higher on the car than he is. But this guy is not giving anything. The broken car character never worked anywhere other than TNA, because a character like that works in a small company. I've said it before. Sue Young could not take her character to WWE. There, there's. There's little in intricacies in a way a smaller wrestling company does television where the entrance ramp is is closer. Uh, it's a more intimate setting with the fans. It just doesn't work on the big stage. He brought it to WWE. Did the broken. Did the woken. It didn't work. Brought it to AEW. It didn't work. It barely lasted. There's something deep down inside this man that wants to do this gimmick and wants to continue it. When he left TNA, him and his brother, Jeff wasn't the one that wanted to leave, by the way. It was Matt. He felt that on that big stage of WWE that they could take this broken gimmick to a completely different level. And it didn't happen. It peaked in TNA. It only works in a company like TNA. And I really could see him bringing it back, even if it's a, for a short amount of time. Because after he left, they tried to do the Undead Realm. They tried to do, you know, shit with Decay and, and different versions of Decay with the Death Dolls. You know, it always featured Rosemary. And then you're bringing Havoc and Sue Young. And while maybe I didn't hate it as much as a lot of people did, it wasn't very good. They always attempted to recreate that, and it was always a cheap knockoff. And I think the TNA fans would pop for it. I think people would tune in specifically for it. They have never reached the level of viewership post Spike TV that they did when Matt Hardy was around doing this gimmick. They they haven't even come close. They haven't even sniffed the fucking ass crack of those numbers. But I think somewhere deep inside, uh, he wants to do this. And the thing is, he can do it in TNA because at this point in his career, he can do cinematic matches. 
you know, he's he he can be at the top of the card in TNA without asked to, being asked to do a whole lot in the ring. That doesn't mean he doesn't ultimately go back to AEW to do whatever desk job Tony Khan has for him. But I can see that one final deletion, that last final run, because it's his last opportunity to work this gimmick anywhere. It's the last chance. He can ne- never do it again. And where the money could be, too, is that he can take this to the indies. He can do it in TNA. He can do it in the indies. He could bring it to fucking MLW briefly if he wants to. It would work. But I, I truly do feel deep down inside he is disappointed that this gimmick never took off on a, on a bigger scale because it was designed for a bigger scale. The WWE fans, when he was initially the broken character, they were flooding the TNA YouTube channel saying, this is why TNA is dying. And then all of a sudden the gimmick got popular and they changed their tune. Because they're sheep and they follow to where people who are predominantly fans of the smaller companies, they're pretty consistent, I think, in in their fandom. And they're pretty consistent in what they like and what they don't like. They don't just follow the masses, which is what happens with the AEW fans, the WWE fans. And there's, you know, there's there's many people who watch all companies. But what I'm saying is when I say a specific group of fans, I'm talking about the primary company that you watch, the primary company that you follow. I think there's more consistency in that fandom. The people who watch and enjoy the smaller companies because they don't take it as seriously. I heard a, a podcaster recently crying what fucking oh man I cannot remember that podcast oh, over some Cody Rhodes shit like actual tears about how the storyline was going like our fan bases our fan base I say are like our little TNA family or whatever as fans like we don't do that we would embrace this character I think and you know it could be fun for a little while it could be something different it can just be something that it doesn't even have to be like a long term gig but you know, I think the dude wants to do it. I think he wants to see it play out one more time. I think he has a lot of ideas that he just never got to to bring to the screen because there was there was storyline wise, there were places that he, they were going to go with that gimmick, but then Anthem wanted to play hardball when it came to negotiations, and you see how that ended. Will they let bygones be bygones? Though I don't know how much heat there is between Matt Hardy and Anthem. He cannot bring Jeff with him. Jeff is under contract there at AW for a while. But Matt could show up tomorrow with this gimmick. He can there's there's a few people he could work with. The crazy Steves, the the PCOs, um, the big cons. And I'm sure they can, you know, I'm sure they can find others. That they don't have to necessarily be dark and have that kind of gimmick. But um yeah, I th- I think it's a, a big time possibility.